so uh, welcome you all in our second session of nhf course on cardiology uh, as you all know in a, in a such a very difficult situation uh, we are all actually physically distant with each other but definitely we are socially connected and through this social connection we are, our today's uh, lecture is on mitral regurgitation we have got four excellent learned speakers today who will share their knowledge with all of us uh, dr mir ishaqul zaman asset prof and dr asset professor dr mir nisaruddin ahmed asset professor dr mohammad kabir zaman and professor nazir ahmed so let's start our first speaker will be dr mir ishaqul zaman he will be talking about etiology and pathophysiology of mitral regurgitation dr ishaqul zaman the floor is for yours i'm your stop share this thank you sir so respected mod moderator teachers colleagues senior juniors and attendees assalamu alaikum and very good afternoon so can you hear me please yes 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 okay yes, yes. so i will have a talk on etiology and pathophysiology of mitral regurgitation mitral regurgitation occurs due to abnormal systolic regurgitation of blood from the left ventricle to the left atrium and results from incomplete valve closure and a pressure gradient between left ventricle and the left atrium. Mitral valve leaflets, mitral annulus, cord tendin, tendina and papillary muscles comprises the mitral valve apparatus. Each of the, each of the valve leaflets, like posterior valve leaflets, had three scallop parts designated as P1, P2, P3, and the corresponding part of the anterior leaflets is designated as A1, A2, A3. Anterior portion of the mitral annulus is in the continuity with fibrous skeleton of the heart, making it less prone to dilatation than the posterior annulus. So normal function of the apparatus brings both leaflets together in systole, creating the cooperation zone, and which located in the posterior one third of the valve orifice. Valve leaflets are attached to the papillary muscles through called the tendine. It should be mentioned here the anterolateral papillary muscles receives dual blood supply from the left anterior descending and circumflex artery, where the posterior medial papillary muscle is supplied by the right coronary artery or left circumflex artery, depending on the coronary dominance. So, mitral regurgitations can occur as a result of malfunction of the component of mitral valve apparatus. So clinically, mitral regurgitation can be classified as primary MR and secondary MR, and secondary MR can be further classified as ischemic causes and non-ischemic causes. And on the, depending upon the type of onset, it can also be classified as acute and chronic MR. These are the most common causes of acute mitral regurgitation, like myxomatous degeneration, rheumatic heart disease, coronary artery disease, infective endocarditis, acute global left ventricular dysfunctions uh, due to myocarditis, trauma, if tear occurs during the PTMs or valve heart surgery, infiltrative diseases, systemic lupus, erythematosus, and actual myxoma are the rare causes of acute mitral regurgitation. Causes of chronic primary MR are rheumatic heart disease, degenerative mitral valvular disease, coronary artery disease, infective endocarditis, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, calcification of mitral valve annulus, congenital such as mitral valve clefts or penetrations, and paravalvular prostate clear. And in the secondary chronic MR, dilated cardiomyopathies and aneurysmal dilatation of red ventricle are the main causes. So let's look at the few 
diseases which causes MR, like myxomatous degeneration of the mitral valve. So hooding, we can see the hooding of the prolapse of the posterior mitral leaflet in the left atrium, which can cause, uh, uh, which can cause a mitral leg agitation. But in acute case, if their rupture occurs, it leads to the acute mitral leg agitation. This is a classic picture of mitral valve in the rheumatic heart disease with leaflet thickening, shortening, thickening, and fusion of tendinous corda, and typical fish mouth appearance. When tear occurs in the corda tendina, it results in acute mitral leg agitation. It should be not noted here in acute rheumatic fever, though we will discuss it in the another session. In acute rheumatic fever, carditis is the main cause of mitral leg agitation. We can see the picture of my mitral valve leaflet in the infective endocarditis. Vegetation, we can see here, it often interrupts the valve closure. There is perforation, which results in mitral regurgitation, and abscess formation cause mitral annular disruptions, and the papillary muscle rupture and cord tendon rupture due to infective endocarditis also cause in acute MR. When the ischemia is a cause of mitral regurgitation in the acute setting, most commonly occur in the inferior posterior MI, as I have noted before that post uh, posterior middle papillary muscles is supplied by the single blood circulation with RCA or LCX. So PM uh, papillary muscle ruptures or caudal evulsion can cause mitral leg agitation in acute setting. Though the complete papillary muscle ruptures uh, lead to death if not, uh, if not taken intervention in the rightly time, an altered LV geometry causing palm, uh, papillary muscle displacement, elongation of the infarcted papillary muscles and exaggerated contraction of the non-infarcted papillary muscles results in acute mitral leak agitation. In the chronic mitral leak agitation, papillary muscle necrosis and segmental dysfunction of inferior posterior wall causing lifted tethering and poor coaptation. MV closing forces decreases due to systolic dysfunctions and LV cavity dilatation causes mitral valve annular dilatations, which results in chronic mitral regurgitation. Mitral annulus normally 10 centimeter, centimeter in circumference. So with sufficient dilatation, loss of adequate leaflet cooptation and tethering of leaflet and cord can occur and produce relative restriction of leaflet motion. In the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, we know that uh, systolic anterior motion of the leaflet occurs due to the venturi effect, results in mitral leg agitation. <laughs> Causes of mitral leg agitations are categorized by the mechanism of leaflet dysfunctions or motions in the Carpenter's classification, which really helps to determine the strategy of, for surgical intervention. So these are the classifications. So type one, when the leaflet is in normal motion, type two, with increased leaflet motion, type three, A, restricted leaflet motion in systole and diastole, and type three, B, when the restricted leaflet motion is only in the systole. These are the causes according to the type of the uh, leaflet motion in the Carpenter's classification. So let's look at the pathophysiology of mitral regurgitation. In acute MR, left ventricles and left atrium are unprepared. So there is sudden increase of left ventricular and diastolic volume. Thus, preload pre also increases. And according to the Frank Stalling mechanism, stroke volume also increases. As the, there is uh, incompetence of the mitral a valve orifice, so there is increased regurgitant volume to the LA. So, uh, as I told, that left atrium is not prepared to receive this such a uh, large volume. So, eventually, pulmonary congestion occurs, and the patient present to us with a complaint of acute dyspnea. Because of the regurgitation of the blood, uh, blood volume from the left ventricle to left atrium, 
forward stroke volume also reduces and reduces after load. So thus, the low cardiac output syndrome may occur in the patient. So patient may present with uh, hypotension and cardiogenic shock. If the patient tolerates this phase, then it enters to the compensated phase of chronic mitral regurgitation. Over time, left atrium and left ven ventricle receives more blood volume. So thus increase in left ventricle and diastolic pressure and left, and left atrial pressure. And compensatory of the left atrium and left ventricle helps to accommodate volume load at lower pressure. So, and it also reduces the pulmonary venous pressure. And it should be mentioned here that during diastole, left atrium also empties its blood volume to the left ventricle. The eccentric left ventricle hypertrophy stimulated by left dilatation further according to the left place law. So the total stroke volume increases to maintain the normal forward stroke volume. But during this period, patient may enjoy their life, but as the time goes on, mitral regurgitation begets mitral regurgitation. It's a vicious cycle of, of further left ventricle and annular dilatation causing more mitral regurgitation. Eventually contractile dysfunction ensues and ejection fraction reduced, air systolic volume increased, and thus pulmonary congestion and pulmonary hypertension develops. And there is also reduced forward stroke volume and cardiac output also reduced and the patient developed the syndrome of low cardiac output. Staging is, staging is very important for the management plan of mitral regurgitation. So there are four stages in primary or secondary MR. This is at grade A. This is at risk of MR, grade B, progressive MR, grade C, asymptomatic severe MR, and symptomatic severe MR. So if we look by face to face, or by stage to stage, we can see the grade A who are, in at, uh, who are at risk of MR. We can see the valve hemodynamics. There is no MR jet or small central jet area, less than 20% left atrium on Doppler and small vena contracta less than 0.3 centimeters. In grade B, which is progressive MR, uh, central jet MR 20% to 40% left atrium, or late systolic eccentric jet uh, mitral regurgitation, vena contractor less than 0.7 centimeter, regurgitant volume less than 60 ml, regurgitant fraction less than 50%, and effective regurgitant orifice is less than 0.4 centimeter, and angiographic grade one to two plus. There is a little mild left atrial enlargement, though there is pulmonary pressure is normal. In asymptomatic severe MR, we can see central jet MR is more than 40% of left atrium or holosystolic eccentric jet mitral regurgitation, vena contractor more than 0.7 uh, centimeter, regurgitant volume more than 60 ml, regurgitant fraction more than 50%, effective regurgitant orifice more than 0.4 centimeter, angiographic grade three to four plus, and moderate or severe LA enlargement is there, LV enlargement is there, pulmonary hypertension may be present at rest or with exercise. And the symptomatic severe MR, all as previous with angiographic grade three to four, and the patient already has pulmonary hypertension. In the secondary chronic MR, the patients who are at risk of MR grade A, they have normal uh, no MR jet or small simple jet area less than 20% LA on Doppler and small vena contractor 0.3 centimeter. Normal or mildly dilated LV size with fixed or inducible regional wall motion abnormalities may be seen. Primary myocardial disease with LV dilatation and systolic dysfunctions may be present. And grade B or progressive MR, we can see effective regurgit regurgitation orifice is less than 0.2 centimeter, regurgitant volume less than 30 ml, and regurgitant fraction less than 50. There is regional wall motion abnormalities with reduced LV systolic function, LV dilatation and systolic dysfunction due to primary myocardial disease. 
and grade C, it's asymptomatic severe MR, ER or effective regurgitant orifice more than two centimeter, regurgitant volume more than 30 ml, regurgitant fraction more than 50% with regional wall motion abnormalities with reduced LV systolic function. There is LV dilatation and systolic dysfunction due to primary myocardial disease. And the symptomatic severe MR, ERO is more than two centimeter, regurgitant volume is more than 30 ml, and regurgitant fractions more than 50%. There is regional wall motion abnormalities with reduced LV systolic function, LV dilatation and systolic dysfunction due to primary myocardial diseases. So it will be discussed in the echo. So I should be, I should stop here. So thank you all. Okay, thank you, Dr. Ishraku Zaman, for your beautiful presentation. Uh, you have some question. Do you want to answer now or you want to answer later on? Okay, there sir. is a question. Okay, the yes, question sir. is. Uh, uh, what is the mechanism of primary hyper, uh, pulmonary hypertension in MR? Okay. And number two, why ischemic MR is more common in inferior MI? And uh, why posterior part of the mitral annulus is more prone to dilatation? So you have okay. three questions and you can answer one by one. Okay. I think I've already mentioned in my slides that mechanism of pulmonary hypertension in MR Actually, pulmonary hypertension in MR develops slowly than mitral stenosis. As I've already mentioned, that the pulmonary mechanism of pulmonary hypertension is due to the backflow of the blood volume from the LV, then to LA, and to then the pulmonary uh, pulmonary circulation. The prob uh, the important thing is here that when the LA become compliant to take the more volume from the LV during diastole, it also helps to reduce its volume to the LV. That's why pulmonary hypertension here develops slowly than mitral stenosis. So I think uh, I answered this question. And the ischemic MR is common in inferior MI because uh, post, um, post, I mean, posterior medial papillary muscles is supplied by the single supply, single circulation, so left circumflex or right coronary artery, so inferior MI, which is related to the RC and LCX territory, uh, depending upon the um, dominance yeah. of the coronary. So that's why ischemic MR is more common in inferior MI. And the mitral, uh, and about the mitral annulus, I have already mentioned there that anterior part of the mitral annulus is continuity of the fibroskeleton of the heart. That's why it makes it Posterior. Less prone to uh, dilated than posterior part of the mitral annulus. Thank you very much, yes, uh, Dr. Ishaq Zaman. Our next presenter is Dr. Asrik Professor Dr. Mir Nasaruddin. So, okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, honorable moderators, my senior and junior colleagues, and distinguished attendees. My presentation is here. Symptoms of mitral irritation are usually subtle and its progression may be insidious and patient may have self-limit their physical activity. So they're really um, be asymptomatic for a long time. So if we consider the symptoms of um, uh, chronic MR particularly, patient usually remain asymptomatic for years, months to year, and usually present with initially fatigue or palpitation and sometimes patient may have normal physical access tolerance until systolic function of the their ventricles develops, and sometimes dyspnea on exertion usually on first of all exertion, then shortness of breath, and ultimately patient develop PND and orthopnea. And sometimes patient may have ratchet heart failure, that is into the dependent edema, ascites as well. And if you look at the acute MR as because it is acute and heart is not ready to work, compliance with this um, in volume, patient usually initial part Patient um, usually present in the CISU setting or other setting, acute setting, patient with Disney and orthopedia is more common than other less uh, symptoms that is fatigue and palpitation. And if you look at the uh, physical findings for the mitral regurgitation, especially in chronic case, apex usually downward and outward and forceful and ill sustained due to LV dilatation and hypertrophy and regurgitation lesion. And there may be systolic thrill in the parastal area 
and also in peristal hip due to right ventricular dilatation and hypertrophy and the palpable pulmonary artery and the palpable P2 also. And that is the, if you look at the at the jugular venous jugular vein, they may be raised and there may be V wave and there is a hepatomegaly and hepatojugular reflux as well and there's a pedal edema. And if we look at the oscal the basal part of the lungs, it was a basal compression as well. But characteristically, there's a normal blood pressure and good volume of pulse of the patients, particularly these so patients. And if we look at the acute MR, usually the clinical background is very important, the sudden onset and usually decomposition stage. And patient usually having the severe breathlessness and sometimes you have pulmonary edema and basal compression. And the characteristics of the patient have tachycardia and tachypnea. But if you look at the different um, diagnostic models, that is um, ECG or uh, chest X ray, and here the characteristically heart size will be normal. But murmur usually soft or absent, and maybe ejection quality and it's the base, and S2 is widely spread due to early A2. Tomorrow, my and apex and reduce to the usually radius towards the axilla, and we hand keep exercise, reduce the valve and the half valve salva. And S1 is really absent, soft, or, and S3, particularly in sudden testing of the pipeline muscle and silver, and then mid dashly flow murmur without metal stenosis. And in severe case, that is S4 as well. And in severe, but the holistic murmur, which is decreasing in nature. And in chronic metal irritation, a systolic murmur usually in grade 3, 5, 6 intensity, minimum grade, that is, and usually hollow systolic. And in acute severe case, the decreasing and seizures in mid to late system. And on sometimes we can do some maneuver, especially when asymptomatic cases, on had my remain silent. In that case, we can do the leg elevation or isometric exercise. And in case of mitral valve prolapse, the mid systolic or least systolic um, murmur and systolic clicks, and it, it can accentuate with the um, squatting and hand grip. And sometimes we need to have dynamic ausculture. That is what does it mean? It means so alter some hemodynamic parameters during cardiac ausculture in order to diagnose the etiology of a heart or murmur, heart sound or murmur. And what are the different uh, modalities for dynamic ausculation? We can deliver in that patient, particularly ausculting um, patient in respiration, brain changing, postural changes, valsalva maneuver, isometric exercise, or producing premature ventricular contraction, or can use some formal agent that amyl nitrate, methyl jonthal, and there's the effect of murmur, especially in metal uh, valve prolapse, the mid systolic click and systolic murmur you can add earlier during inspiration as because inspiratory reduction in the LV size and increased redundancy of metal valve and there is valve metal valve prolapse. And here is the scene of the uh, systolic comes towards the SM uh, faster sound in case of inspiration and becomes delayed in case of uh, during expiration of metal valve prolapse. And LVD volume is decreased, so there is standing and valsalva. And on the other hand, my, uh, my LV volume is back on. Not sure. On auscultation, there is a hollow systolic barma is present and prominent is increased. And what the differential diagnosis? First of all, should think about a metabolic prolapse. Then we can uh, think about especially, uh, especially calcified aortic stenosis, which is um, causing prominent murmur at the apex and may be confused with the metal irritation, holocystic murmur. And there is functional TR may be also the lateral external border, and would, but it is not related to the axilla and it is intensity to the inspiration. And sometimes VSD may be confused with the metal irritation, so causing heart's holocystic murmur at the left lateral external border and radiate to the right of the sternum. And put a uh, muscle dysfunction as already Dr. Instructor Jamal already described, and, um, and especially Posterior middle papillary muscle dysfunction as because it is supplied only by either RCA, right coronary artery, or left circumflex artery. And in case of ASD, there is a um, causing wide and fixed spreading murmur. So there is no confusion with the metal irritation. And sometimes traumatic, especially during after post metal valvotomy. There is the differentiation of valvular lesion. In case of first invasion, I am going to ask you a question. Okay, now, question number one is that what about the pulse in severe MR? Is it still in good volume? I mean, severe MR pulse is key character volume. Come on, sir, please. Especially in the mild to moderate cases, there is a good volume of pulse and blood pressure as well as normal blood pressure. But when patient develop 
uh, LV dysfunction in that case and some are gradually become low volume pulse and are is depend upon the output of the LV. Uh, how will uh, differentiate uh, the cause of MR by radiation of the MR? Can you differentiate uh, MR by cause of the MR? Um, and cause but usually most common cause in our country that is rheumatic uh, valvular heart disease it is usually associated with metastasis as well and sometimes uh, yes uh, we can um, differentiate either it is ischemic or it is a primary mr if it is ischemic in that case it may radi uh, radiation particular particular radiation is uh, toward the either uh, toward the axilla or toward the base of the uh, heart in case of particular for uh, ischemic MR and uh, for rheumatic valvular heart disease, in that case, particular radiation to the axial end. Something can I add? Yes, sir. Yeah, why not? Actually, I think the, the he wants to know uh, according to the prolapse of the MB mitral valve, whenever there is prolapse of the anterior leaflet, the MR jet goes posterior. That usually uh, radiates towards the axilla and towards the back, and even some author says that it can radiate up to head. And whenever there is prolapse of the posterior leaflet, the MR jet radiates towards the anterior view, and this mitral regurgitation may mimic the uh, murmur of the aortic stenosis. That we can differentiate uh, that whether there is prolapse of the posterior lumen or prolapse of the anterior lumen according to the radiation of the. Marmar, sir. Thank you. Sir, I can run for it. Okay. And different types of pleasure that is the past history, marmar situation, mitral regurgitation, the again the TR, VHD, and papillary muscle, and mitral valve prolapse is the most common, especially for the female sex. And this is due to omicronous degeneration of the mitral valve, which already, already told by the um, our first speaker. And here's the part. Uh, Systolic click is the hallmark for the diagnosis of the mitral valve prolapse. And how can we judge the severity of the murmur by the presence of systolic thrill or pan systolic murmur over the mitral area and presence of S3 and mid diastolic flow murmur over the mitral area and degree of LVS seen as clinically and on the ECG and the chest as well. And some relevant instruction we can do for the, uh, for the diagnosis that is. Electrocardiogram, chest x ray, echo, different models of echo that is, and cardi cardiac MRI and CT also as well, and stress test, and some sorts of cases that we can do cardiac catheterization as well. And the ECG usually non it may be non specific, or sometimes maybe sinus rhythm, or maybe you know, arterial fibrillation, or maybe volume overload, or maybe left axis deviation, or right axis deviation, or as well as right ventricle hypertrophy also. And things may be caused by altered by other concomitant heart disease also. The patient have hypertension or ischemic heart disease. And in case of aortic valve disease, there is a vertical hypertrophy. Maybe have bundle branch block or an arrhythmia, any source of arrhythmia, especially most common actual uh, fibrillation or some subsubactic bit also. And left atrial enlargement is the, you can see the ECG by right atrial enlargement and left atrial enlargement. And here is the normal, this is the left atrial enlargement, the broad bifid. P wave and this right only right atrial enlargement due to delayed activation of the left atrial there is a notch in the P wave and P wave duration is usually more than 120 millisecond and obviously the negative P wave and lead V1 support the diagnosis of left atrial abnormality and here is the volume overload ECG and with the volume overload ECG and chest X is usually find this is the state of the left heart border and double control of the right uh, border of the heart and the displaying of the uh, carina and elevated main bronchus and with a uh, usually permanent pulmonary venous um, transverse pressure by uh, fissure due to Carly's B line and double for the right border. This here is the typical X ray for material irritation, especially in the acute material irritation with the acute case. And cardiac uh, MRI and CT. When it provides complementary information regarding uh, echocardiography in patient with metal irritation, and particularly it's highly accurate for quantifying the degree of metal irritation, and sometimes depict the metal structure and morphology, especially when planned for metal repair, uh, valve repair. In that case, it should be go for uh, cardiac 
um, the computer tomography. And also it provides two volumetric measurements of the chamber dimension and function as also as the micular fibrosis. And stress test usually for the assessment of functional status and sensitivity elicitation. And sometimes stress echocardiography may reveal elevated pulmonary artery pressure and mitral worsening in mitral regurgitation and blunted left ventricular volume and right ventricular contract reserve as well. And in some cases, we can do the cardiac catheterization, especially when planned for, you know, we think about uh, that is a patient may have uh, ischemic origin in that case, patient uh, definitely go for coronary angiography or sometimes left ventriculography for and hemodynamic measurements, especially for non-invasive test, generally in call to sleep. Or when pulmonary artery pressure is out of proportion to the severe of the mitral irritation as assessed by the non-invasive testing. And sometimes there's a conflicting regarding the severity of the AMR. In that case, we should go for cardiac catheterization as well. The, and some complication, patient may develop pulmonary edema, that is a medical complication or congestive heart failure or irreversible left ventricular system dysfunction, thrombosis, usually is more common in metal stenosis, but in case of MR, may have developed thromboembolism from atrial fibrillation. And that's a big release for subsequent complications. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mirna Sarajan Ahmed, for your representation. Now, as expected, you have a lot of questions to be answered. I think you can, uh, there are a lot of questions for you. So I will select a few of them, and I think you can answer a few of them. One question is that how MVP can be differentiated from MR clinically? Uh, another question was, uh, what is the differential diagnosis of MR? If it is asked in the exam, what should the uh, uh, exam answer? For MVP, what is that? Uh, bolus. For MVP, mid systolic MVP, uh, mitral mm -hmm. valve uh, prolapse. That's first question to give society this lesson, no? Uh, MVP can be differentiated from MR. Clinically. MR. MR usually produces hollow systolic murmur and MVP the mid systolic click or auscultation that is the more hallmark for the characteristic hallmark for the types of uh, metal valve prolapse. And we can do some um, maneuver, especially hand grip and squatting. Um, in that case, the murmur intensity may be different, uh, variation of the metal valve prolapse. And metal irritation is put the hall, um, uh, that is hollow systolic murmur which it radiates toward the back or the axilla. And second question, sir. Uh, di differential diagnosis of MR. Well, I have already what, to say, what to say in the exam? What yeah. is the be specific. Theoretically, you can do MR patient is MR patient is MR patient is MR patient is MR 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 patient is MR patient is MR patient is MR patient is MR patient MR patient is 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 we can bring differential uh, diagnosis. Uh, the other portion of differential diagnosis of MR with MS. MR is MS thakle ta DD ki hote pare. MR is the jo the MS thakle shakene ASD ASD aste pare. ASD aste pare ASD common. I think so. Uh, mechanism of MDM in uh, MR. MR MDM current. That is a flow murmur. Mid dust murmur is a flow murmur. It doesn't okay. have any opening snap or P systolic accentuation. This is the flow murmur. Okay. That is relative okay. produced relative uh, obstruction. That is uh, it's produced uh, mid dust like murmur. That's all flow murmur. Uh, are the, are the also, what is the purpose of dynamic auscultation? Dynamic auscultation is called key. What is the benefit? So, key, key power Jokon Frank dies, Colton and Amra Kuno, yet a different Yatasta Pina, Tokon Amra, the dynamic Oscalson Tabra Kori, second Amra, hand grip, sorry, different by maneuver as a human respiration of the pare, squatting position to a hand grip with a video, different balsal of maneuver to a or different formal critical agent the Abrakutari, Amal Natchet, Gent and Davis as a jewel. Art questioner, so it up on a speaker agent, however, treatment is preparable to say. In case of ischemic MR, is it reversible after PCI? Can it be reversed after reverse polarization? I'm not sure, but uh, sometimes okay. it may be reversible, but 
প্র্যাকটিক্যাল লাইফে তো দেখি অনেকে মামা তো ডিজে পেয়ার করে না থেকেই যায় ওকে थैंक यू वेरी मच নেসার তোমার অনেক অনেক প্রশ্ন ছিল এত প্রশ্ন উত্তর দিলে তোমার সারা দিন লাগবে বোঝা যাচ্ছে যে তোমার টপিকটা তোমার টপিকটা খুব হট টপিক ছিল আর কি এনিওয়ে आवर नेक्स्ट प्रेजेंटर इज আমার তো इंट्रोडक्शन না দাওই ভালো ইজ ওয়ান অফ দা ফাইনেস্ট ইকো কার্টোগ্রাফিস্ট ইন দা ইন দা ইন आवर কান্ট্রি আমরা সবাই তাকে চিনি এক নামে এন্ড হি উইল বি প্রেজেন্টিং দা ইকো কার্টোগ্রাফিক ইকো কার্টোগ্রাফিক ফিচারস অফ মাইটারিগেশন ডক্টর মোহাম্মদ কবির জামান এসেট প্রফেসর কবির ভাই এগিয়ে যাও Okay, my topic is echocardiographic evaluation of the mitral ligament. Respected moderator, my teachers and students and my dear colleagues. So I will put some few words regarding the mitral ligament. This is a normal feature, apical fourth chamber view. What I, uh, is shown here is the zone of coarctation of the coarctation of the mitral nerve. This is very important. Is the a apical fourth chamber view, and this is the same picture but in parasternal lines in view, showing the zone of coarctation of the normal mitral. Here, this part is known as the coarctation height, and this part from annulus to and this red arrow it indicates the coarctation width. Actually, for pathogenesis and mechanism of the mitral degeneration, these two things become disrupted. And leads to mitral degeneration. Now, this is a still picture of mitral valve annular calcification and leading to degeneration. You know, mitral degenerative mitral valve calcification usually involves the posterior mitral nerve and the annulus. This is some still picture of cleft amen, and this is the cleft amen with MR, and this is the cleft amen best. Best appreciated in short axis, and this is the three-dimensional report. Can be very appreciated group with better delineation and excellently delineated by 3D report. Now this is a still picture of. I, I want to reduce the screen. Okay, this is a <clears throat> diagrammatic picture showing the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Obstructive cardiomyopathy that leads to systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve, and this is the echocardiographic feature. This is the huge the thick and diagonal stand, and the echo picture showing the MR and LVT obstruction. So I will talk few words regarding the mitral valve collapse. What does it mean? Mitral valve collapse occurs in the clinical entity with or without thickening. And with or without MR, thickening means the thickness more than uh, equal to more than five millimeter, and you know the normal thickness is less than three millimeter. Now, what is the definition of the mitral valve collapse? Echocardiographic diagnosis of MVP is usually based on the flex view and defined as systolic displacement of more than two millimeter of one or both leaflets into LA. Below the plane of the mitral annulus, I'll show the picture. And this is the diagrammatic picture, the plane of mitral annulus, and this is the collapse of mitral valve. And this is the 2D image. You can see the collapse. There is the beyond the mitral valve annulus, and this is the MO. It's a very helpful in examination. If I ask any question, this is the MVP, posterior displacement of the mitral valve. <coughs> These are some characteristics of the mitral valve. Mitral valve. This is the spectrum of disease. In one end, there is fibroelastic deficiency. At other end, that is the Barlow disease. And in between the four infrastructures, the differences are mainly regarding the thickness of the leaflet and the dilatation or diameter of the annulus. Now, what does it mean by collapse of the mitral leaflet and flail mitral? The collapse of the mitral leaflet. There is severe bowing of the leaflet or leaflet segment into LA, with the tip of the leaflet still directed towards the ventricular apex. What is by picture? This is the picture of the mitral valve collapse. The tip there is collapse of PML, and the tip of the PML still pointing towards the LV apex, and this is the MR. Now, what is mean by flail mitral leaflet? This usually occurs in coronal rupture, 
and there is plain segment of the leaflet such that the leaflet is displaced in the LA in system with the tip of the leaflet pointing away from the ventricular apex. What is the picture? This is the plain PML and the tip of the PML is pointing away from this is the LV apex, away from the LV apex and this is the MR. Now, what about the characteristics of the MR in ischemic heart disease? There is abnormal contraction of the papillary muscle or very or underlying ventricular wall. And there is a characterized by restricted leaflet motion with tethering of the valve, resulting in the appearance of tenting and tethering of the mitral valve system that results in MR. What goes by picture? This is a classical picture. You can see PML is there is tethering of the PML and there is tenting of the AML. And this does cause the non cooperation. And this is the MR. Now, what does it mean by the functional MR? Here, the normal mitral valve and leaflets and body, there is LV dilatation and dysfunction, abnormal orientation of the papillary muscles and abnormal dilatation, and causing systolic non cooperation of leaflet and MR. By picture, this is the di diagrammatic. There is dilatation of the LV, spherical remodeling, papillary muscle dysfunction, caudal tethering, restricted lifted closure, mitral valve numbers, and as a result in the MR. Now, a few words regarding the diastolic <coughs> mitral regurgitation. It's a tricky concept. Actually, whenever there is <coughs> very increased LV and diastolic pressure, as for example in dilated cardiomyopathy, and a prolonged PR interval that is more than 200 milliseconds that induces diastolic coma. I will not go details for this. I will skip this lecture. And these are the part of the silent MR. Be sure and be careful. MR jet not always audible, but uh, like this, the voyage of the wind will be for about uh, that has been talked about it. Two characters of Greek mythology, one is the echo, the symbol of sound, and there is Narcissus, symbol of image. Now I'll go through the echocardiographic assessment of severity of you know. What I have talked previously, that was the logical diagnosis of the echo. The echo has two folds. Echo imaging has two one is to determine the severity of the MR and another to determine the etiology of the disease. I will talk about now severity. Now by 2D echo, what are the things we can see? We evaluate the valve morphology and etiology, measure the size of the mitral valve animals, measure the dimension of the LA and LB, evaluate the size of RA and RB, systolic function of both LB and RB, and observe is there any wall motion that now I have LB or RB. Now this is the still picture to show the how to measure the LA dimension and end diastolic LV, dimen LV dimension. This is very important for deciding the timing of the surgery. And this is the uh, fourth chamber view, measurement of the mitral valve annulus and the size of the LA. In our institute, we usually take two dimensions of the LA size for the surgeons. And this is how to measure the LV IDV. Now, Chamber-wise, what is the severity impact on chamber dimension? For mild MR, chamber dimensions are normal. For moderate MR, LA is dilated, but LB is of normal dimension. Severe MR, both LA and LB is dilated. This is the hemodynamic consequence and very important. Now, you can see the mitral valve in rheumatic heart disease, how the cooptation depth and height reduced. You can see the single loop. The PML, both leaflets are taken, PML is immobile, and there is non cooptation central part, and there is decreased in the cooptation high both. The same patients in uh, apical fourth chamber B, what does it seem? There is severe MR. This is the wall impinging MR gel and swells in the inside the LA cavity. Both LA and LV are dilated. So, this is the classical similar of severe MR. Now, what does it look like the frail AML? You can see it. There is AML is frail AML. So, 
there is a visitation at us the tip of the airman how does boots like you can see this is the visitation now we can see the collapse of the ml of 65 years old male see this, this is a very good picture good signal to see the collapse of ml now mo how can it helps us to diagnose the collapse this mo of echo can be applied for evaluation of mdp and to evaluate the systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve in case of hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy how does it looks like this is the plan of the mitral valve today and this is the m mode that is posterior displacement of the mitral valve but be sure your m mode cursor or beam should be just beyond the mitral valve annulus there are four pictures one is the normal picture another is the mbp as i have shown previously there is posterior displacement of the mitral valve and this is the picture of the hoc hypertrophic osteo obstructive cardiomyopathy with some there is anterior displacement systolic anterior displacement and you can gauge it get it easy by simple by systole and this is the systole and this is the color remote so how we can differentiate the pan systolic marmar and elite systolic marmar this is the example of the pan systolic marmar and <clears throat> this is the example of the late systolic marmar you can see the systole and the less systole this is the pan systole marmar this is the marmar mr sorry pan systole marmar pan systole mitral regurgitation so doppler echo now we we'll see what are the parameters you can estimate or evaluate the by doppler echo one is the mrj area and its nature measurement of the vena contractor width volumetric method for calculation of the mitral regurgitation volume we can estimate the proximal isovarus surface area and we can measure the pa pressure and this is the schematic or diagrammatic representation whenever you want is to get the ecg what is the extent of the mitral regurgitation it starts from the beginning of the r wave and ends up at the end of the p wave this is the mr and it <laughs> So this is the still picture of the MR, and see with the you can correlate with ECG. Now, J area method of the mitral regurgitation. How can it be done? So you can have the classically we do it the four chamber view and trace the MR J have and the area, and you can have in two views, four chamber and two chamber. Then can average. Then you, how can it be? They assess the uh, severity, the MRJ regurgitation jet area, and the left atrial area ratio is then calculated. And MR is graded as follows: less than 20% MRJ size is mild MR, and more than 40% of the LA it is the severe MR. Now this is an another method for grading. Someone even the jet area when it is 15% grade one, 25% grade two. 35% grade 3 60% grade 4 now regarding the vena contractor method of mrj this is very important it's practically applied so the most practical initial method to assess the severity of the mitral regurgitation the vena contractor is affected less by the eccentricity of the mrj so it is this advantage and I have an advantage over the pisa method for eccentric regurgitation jet How can it be done? Optimize color flow imaging of regurgitated jet by demonstrating the PISA, vena contractor, and regurgitated jet. This is important. And magnify the region of interest to zoom. Then measure the smallest to void immediately distal to the regurgitated orifice, perpendicular to the direction of the jet. How it looks like? So this is a classical example. The zoom view, apical four chamber view. You can see the PISA. the neck vena contractor and the whole length of the mr and this is the ideal point for measurement of the vena contractor perpendicular to the jet of the length of the mr these are three other example how to measure the vena contractor now vena contractor width method how does it mean mild moderate severe less than 0.3 vena contractor is mild and more than 7 it is a severe mr now how to evaluate the mitral regurgitated volume 
regurgitate fraction, effective regurgitate orifice area. These are three key concepts and our more or less academic interest, not practice in the in our day to day real life. So I will not go details for this to bombard your thing. I'll skip all the so regurgitated volume traction orifice area can be measured by two methods, volumetric methods and PCR methods. But I will not go details for this. So I will skip these slides. Just have a glimpse, like the glimpses of the world history of the Nehru. How do these things like so? So, but I'll show you the severity, severity of the of these parameters. Regurgitated volume, when it is less than 30 ml, it is mild. When it is more than 60 ml, it is severe. But regarding the regurgitated orifice area, where it is less than 2, it is mild. More than 4.4, it is severe. It is already been talked by Dr. Ishraq Jamal. So I have not go details. Now to calculate the PSP, permanent pressure, how can I do this? Just find out an TRJ. And Put the continuous wave Doppler and trace like that and find out the peak gradient. Here, peak gradient is 105. And add the RA pressure to it. Usually, we add 10. Then, PSP will be at 115. Very high PA pressure, severe pulmonary artery hypertension. This slide. Now, this is the algorithm. How can we proceed in Doppler wise to decide about the MR severity? If put the color Doppler, if, if it appears more than mine, then measure the vena contractor. If it is more than 0.7, severe enough. If it is less than 7, then it is mild enough. And then you can measure the jet width and jet area like this. And other methods are PISA and the pulse rate Doppler volumetric method, but I will not go to test for this. Now come to the LB side and systolic function. This is a very important part for deciding the timing of the surgery. And this is the primary focus on serial studies in patients with chronic MR as a key element in clinical decision making. For mitral regard special, MR jet, severe MR, normal LB function is the more than 60% LB gave in the normal function. Anything that is just below the 60%, it is abnormal, abnormal systolic function. So, what are the parameters for LB dysfunction? It is the evidence of progressive LB dilatation and the end systolic dimension more than 40 to 45. I have mentioned the two figures. More than 40, it is mentioned in ACTH guideline, and more than 50, it is mentioned in the ESC guideline, or any reduction in this system. And you can just should prompt consideration of surgical intervention, regardless of the symptomatic status of patient, to prevent irreversible LV dysfunction. Now, Strain evaluation. Strain, anything just less than minus 19.9 indicate that the LBEF corresponds to the less than 50%. So it's an important tool for deciding the timing of the surgery. Trans is physically poor, but it is better option in case of poor transference if you don't know, and go for good understanding of the mechanism of MR and routinely used in the power of operative evaluation for microbiome here. Now, stress ego, there's already me, Dr. Meir Nisaruddin have talked about it, so I'm not going to do this. Now, these are some the slides. Are now, decide about the severity of the mitral bar. You have all the parameters. The slides are modeling of automatic. You can, sorry. Now, you can decide uh, uh, two methods for uh, severity. One is the mild, moderate, and severe. This school of thought, another is stages. But in our real life, we usually practice these methods, mild, moderate, severe. But for staging, as a, a detailed stock details by me, instructed John, I will emphasize two things. There is two points: asymptomatic severe and symptomatic severe. Severe lesion may have the, but the patient is remaining in asymptomatic status, and so, severity, mild, moderate, severe, these are echocardiographic diagnoses. The patient may or may not be symptomatic, and that needs that clinical correlation. 
and these are all parameters that I have talked with individual parameters with jet area, vena contracta, like this. So I'll not go to test this. I am at the end of my lecture. I will talk a few words regarding the secondary MR. It is a greater difficulty defining the spirit of the MR in patients with secondary MR than those of the primary MR. How does, you can see there are several parameters, but I will uh, emphasize two uh, parameters, regurgitant volume and effective regurgitant volume. For primary MR, it is the more than 60 ml that is severe, but for secondary MR, only the 30 ml that indicates severe MR. And for Effective degurgitated orifice area for primary MR, it is the point more than 0.4 that indicates severe, but secondary MR only 0.2, more than 0.2 that indicates severe. So, this is my very favorite now slide. Wisdom implies the timely and rightful application of knowledge. And thank you all for your patience. Thank you, Dr. Kabir Zaman, for your excellent uh, lecture. So now uh, our last presenter is Dr. Professor Nazir Ahmad. He will be talking about the treatment modalities of mitral regurgitation. Professor Nazir Ahmad, please open. Share question. Okay, there are a question. Just, just, just a few minutes. I mean, I can want to talk with Dr. Kabir uh, are you listening to me? Okay, I'm listening. Uh, you have a few questions for you. Uh, how you differentiate ischemic MR from rheumatic MR through ECO? I think it happened bolus already. Differentiation between ischemic MR and rheumatic MR by echocardiography. Our second question is so what is the role of is stress echo in my, my MR? A bit of question answered the MR. Stress echo in uh, MR. Actually, whenever there is confusion or disparity between the symptom and the echocardiographic parameters, then usually uh, we go for the stress echo. Whether the, after stress there is severity, there is increase in uh, severity of MR and the patient becomes symptomatic. That is the main issue. Okay. Our actuology differentiate between ischemic MR and rheumatic MR by echocardiography. Very, very clear, very clean. -cut. In ischemic MR, this is secondary MR, leaflets, morphologies are within normal level. But for mitra, uh, rheumatic heart disease, the valve leaflets are thickened. And classically, the AML is immobile, there is thickening of the leaflet, and there is thickening of the subvalvular structure. And, and there is more or less fusion of the commissions. One thing that I want to at, uh, get attention that for mitral degradation, there is predominantly contracture of the effect of the Subvalvular structure that is cording, and for mitral stenosis, there is predominant uh, fusion of the commission that makes the difference. At the other post of chair, uh, at the vena contractor near can vena contractor method correctly classify MR in a patient with LB dysfunction? Actually, uh, for LB dysfunction, there are some fellows because there are systolic dysfunction. So MRJ is not that smart like in primary MR. So it, it, it will be decided on the different parameters. That's why for severity of secondary MR, there are some parameters that is much less reduced or than the primary MR. I have shown it. Gotcha. In the case of eccentric MR, how will you assess severity in ECO? Eccentric MR is a tricky MR. If you see that there is eccentric wall impinging and swells inside the LA cavity, it's an indication of the severe MR. Another thing, if you find that the LV dimension is direct, then it's severe. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Kabir Zaman. We have more, we had more questions, but okay, we'll go for Dr. Professor Nazir Ahmad for his presentation. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I am talking about my management of mitral regurgitation. Shona Jai? Yes, sir. Mitral regurgitation is that is the medical management and interventions. Management of mitral regurgitation, it has three components. 
that is the medical treatments either surgery or repair of the mitral valves or sometimes minimally invasive procedures or cutaneous or surgical procedures acute mitral regurgitation is always very uh, medical emergency acute medical uh, uh, Acute myocardial regurgitation is a medical emergency, especially in acute severe MR. It occurs most of the patient is acute myocardial infarction, infective endocarditis, traumatic, or myxomatous in this stressful condition, and several other symptoms where the corda or papillary muscles are dysfunctions. And Regarding treatments, early diagnosis and treatment is needed as soon as possible. And medical therapy has limited role. And that's why sometimes vasodilator therapy is very much helpful. Combination of therapy, that is inotropic agent, especially dobutamine and nitroprocytes, sometimes given some beneficial effect. Regarding IAPAMI, IABP reduces the after loads. Sometimes it requires for the freezing for mitral valve surgery. Percutaneous circularity assisted device might help to stabilize the patients. And in acute mitral regurgitation, if it is due to the pulmonary edema or something, some medical uh, treatment is required, that is the vitreable uh, uh, card AC inhibitors and uh, nitrates and vasodilators also. And regarding treatment of acute mitral regurgitation, there is the intervention is the best options. It means prompt mitral valve replacement is the recommendation for severe acute mitral regurgitation. But in case of cord ruptures and mitral valve repair is better option than that of the mitral valve replacement. In case of the mitral, in case of mitral regurgitation, selective use of mitral clips in post-infarct patients is reported recently. Regarding chronic primary mitral regurgitations, we know the chronic mitral uh, chronic mitral regurgitation divided in two groups. We have seen earlier that is primary and secondary. I am talking about the primary mitral regurgitations is management. The role of medical therapy for asymptomatic and chronic AMR caused by valve disease is not well established. ACCN, AHA and European Society of Cardiology guidelines do not recommend it the use of pharmacological vasodilators in chronic mitral regurgitation with presia LV functions. And some drugs are very important, especially beta blockers, diuretics, AC inhibitors, ARB, aldosterone antagonists, and prophylaxis for infective endocarditis and anticoagulation if there is any fibrillation. Sometimes, sometimes very arrhythmia is found to control the LV. Regarding management of the chronic mitral MR, surgery is the best option. Valve replacement number one. If possible, that mitral repair is the best option than that of the mitral valve replacement. Sometimes minimally invasive surgical procedure is very important for surgery of the primary mitral regurgitations. Regarding management of secondary mitral regurgitations, it is also functional mitral regurgitations. It means the valves are normal, but problems in the heart muscles. That means heart muscle makes the valves problematic. And Medical management is that the patient with secondary mitral regurgitation and heart failure with reduced LB ejection fraction should uh, standard guideline directed medical therapy for heart failure. 
including AC inhibitors, ARBs, beta blockers, aldosterone, and CRT with biventricular pacing is very recommended for secondary mitral regurgitations. And lifestyle modification is another important issue, and also the anticoagulation in atrial fibrillations. Regarding guidelines for surgical guidelines for mitral regurgitations. These are the guidelines. It is 2017. It is overlapped with 2014. There is the indications, interventions, and recommendations is this. The chronic mitral, chronic primary MR. I'll give you later details and the next one is secondary MR, that is the, this one. And guidelines, sometimes what guidelines do not provide? All guidelines do not provide because it does not cover all different combinations of conditions. Number two, it does not include the individual experience. And also it does not include the economic factors in different countries, in different situations, and newest advancements always not usually not indicated in guidelines. Regarding indication of surgery for mitral regurgitation, this is a very important issue. Here, the mitral regurgitation is here, it divided in primary mitral regurgitation and secondary mitral regurgitation. We are talking about the primary mitral regurgitation. It means problems in the valve, which leads to disease in the heart, is divided in two ways. That is, one is severe mitral regurgitation, when the vena contractor is more than 7.7, .7 and LV is uh, uh, volume is more than 60, and uh, 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 etc. and LV dilated. All of these, sorry, is when it is symptomatic, that is the ejection practice is more than 30, surgery is number one options. That is the ACC guidelines say. But when ejection practice is less than 30, is surgery, sometimes it is uh, um, to be is another one we can see when it is asymptomatic patients. It is very important. Patient is asymptomatic, but ejection fraction is in between 30 to 60, and LB ejection systolic diameter is more than 40, and in these cases, surgery is the best option. In regarding another way, ejection fraction is more than 60 and in systolic diameter is less than 40. If it is progressive disease, there is it decreases the ejection fractions and there is the surgery is the option class 2A. But when the ejection fraction is the more than 60, it will be and systolic diameter is less than 40. Likelihood repairment is the best option. If it is possible, then mitral valve repair is the is doing. If it is not possible, then only follow up period you can. Another one is say the progressive mitral regurgitations. And some Benakaba contrast already it is previously mentioned and only follow-up is the best option periodically. Regarding secondary mitral regurgitations, there is problems in the hearts, not in the bulbs. It is due to either coronary artery disease and heart failure and condition CRT in these patients. When treatment of coronary artery disease, heart failure, and sometimes we do synchronous therapy, then if it is symptomatic still and uh, severe MR in this case when persistent NYS class 3 or 4 
surgery is the option, especially in the secondary mitral regurgitation. But when it is incentivated with severe mitral regurgitation, patient is still is good. Money and wise class of injury is less than that of the uh, three or that periodic treatment is the best option. Follow up. Another progressive mitral, progressive MR, that is the stage B, it is earlier mentioned only, that is the follow up is the best options. This is the one we intervene regarding mitral valve treatments. According to the guidelines, indications for surgery, especially mitral valve replacement in chronic primary mitral regurgitations is when mitral valve surgery is recommended for symptomatic patients with chronic primary MR, that is stage D, and with ejection fraction is greater than 30. That is the class one indication. That is the replacement of the mitral valves. Another one, mitral valve surgery is recommended as a asymptomatic patients with chronic mitral regurgitation with mild to moderate LV dysfunction. That is the ejection fraction in between 30 to 65 with an LB and systolic diameter 40. That is the class one. It is still surgery is the best option, especially mitral valve replacement. But sometimes in between these two, concomitant mitral valve repair or mitral valve regurgitation or replacement is indicated in patients with chronic primary mitral regurgitation undergoing cardiac surgery for either indications. Here we can see in number one when mitral valve replacement is needed. When it is very sm smooth in very small simple way, surgery if patient is symptomatic, when it is more than 30% ejection fraction, surgery is the number one option. Second, why not less than 30% surgery will be the best option? Because less than 30% ejection fraction, no surgical, no survival benefit, higher mortality rate, and high re uh, recurrence of mitral regurgitations. And that's why ejection fraction less than 30 is not a very good um, enough condition for the patients. Next one is same, that is the class one indi uh, 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 indication, that is the re um, uh, recommendations, where that is the severe mitral regurgitations with mild to moderate LB dysfunction, that is 35 to 60, and LB and systolic is 40, it is same, very small way we can say asymptomatic patient with ejection fraction less than 60 and industry diameter is 40 by 45 percent. Surgery is the best option in this sense. It is same we have mentioned in earlier. Ah, what are the types of mitral valves we use in mitral valve replacement? That is the mechanical valves and tissue valves. Tilting, bileaflet, and cased ball valves sometimes. And tissue valves is different types of tissue we are using. Indication of mitral valve repair in chronic primary mitral regurgitations. Here, that is the mitral valve repair is recommended in preference to mitral valve replacement when treatment is indicated for patient with chronic severe primary mitral regurgitation with involvement in the posterior leaflets of the mitral valves. That is the class one indications. Mitral valve repair is recommended in reference to mitral valve, uh, um, uh, in, in preference to mitral valve uh, replacement when treatment is indicated with patient with chronic severe mitral regurgitation, involvement in the anterior mitral leaflets or sometimes both the anterior and posterior lateral leaflets and with successful repairment is very important regarding repair. 
and mitral valve repair is reasonable in experienced surgical centers for asymptomatic patients with chronic cbr mitral regurgitations and higher preserved lv functions and new onset of atrial fibrillation pulmonary hypertension pas were more than 55 and while likely to successful repair it is about 95% and mortality is less than 1% that is the class 2a indications this is the money uh, rule of thumb is that repair is always better than that of the mitral valve replacements and why mitral valve repair is the best because it lower operative mortality than that of the mitral valve replacement lv function is preserved left thromboembolic manifestations less anticoagulants induced hemorrhage is very important but it has got some problems problems are when the anterior replace with difficult to repair when extensive calcification and associated with other diseases commissure area is our extensive disease in both the commissures and middle scap scapula of posterior replace having severe diseases more coaptation distance and complex jet of the mitral regurgitations in narsel we can say the management of severe mitral much severe chronic mitral regurgitations it divide in two ways we previously mentioned that is number one is when the patient is symptomatic ejection practice is more than 30 percent direct surgery or repairment is the best option when it is less than 30 and refractory med medical management is okay only medical treatment is go is not possible repairment or with other morbidities surgery is another options when it is not possible is for surgery then med treatment with medical management sometimes parcutaneous is to age repair regarding another one when lv ejection fraction is more less than 60 lv systolic is 45 we already mentioned it surgery is the options new onset atrial fibrillation and psp is more than 50 and surgery repair is the options when is likely would uh, uh, where repair or surgical low risk and presence of risk factors there is the surgery sometimes is very important when it is not possible follow up is the treatment this is the secondary mitral regurgitations it is also guidelines has shown that the secondary mitral ligament treatment in the coronary artery disease heart failure and consider crt is the best option and if it is still symptomatic with cbr mr persistent method the surgery is the best option and other two asymptomatic patient cbr mr patient is uh, lv function is preserved that in periodic management and progressive mr but mm, lv is good that is periodic monitoring is very important regarding secondary mr if the bypass surgery is indicated with ejection fraction is 30 percent or more surgery with mbr is the options another options whether bypass surgery is needed when but ejection fraction is less than 30 percent but evidence of viability of the myocardial infarction there is a chance of improvement of the uh, lv functions in these cases we could do cabg either mitral valve replacement or repair at arts um, uh, another some issues that is percutaneous interventions for mitral valve regurgitations sometimes we use when uh, mitral valve clip we can use mitral valve clip is a trans catheter mitral valve device for use of the high risk inoperable patients with cbl mitral regurgitation suitable anatomic criteria 
It is currently approved by USMTA for use in symptomatic patients with primary, that is the degenerative patients who are prohibitively with surgery. In contrast, mitral clip system has already received class 2B recommendation by PAC guidelines. Another option for cutaneous, that is the H to H repair for mitral clip. It can be done percutaneously, sometimes it's by surgery. And but in case of treatment, H to H repair, it is inferior to surgery to reduce the mitral regurgitation, improves the symptoms, improves the quality of lives, and improves the functional cavity. It has got some criteria for H to H repairs that the moderate to severe one and cooperation lens and exercise there. Another option is robotic mitral valve repairs. It is still doing from the uh, percutaneous procedures. It is going the uh, uh, <clears throat> from the behind the right atrium into the LA and it is done by mitral repair in this way. Regarding mitral valve prolapse management, a normal lifestyle and regular exercise are encouraged. A restriction for competitive sports, patient with mitral valve prolapse, palpitation, chest pain, anxiety, beta blocker is the best option. Cessation of stimulants such as caffeine, alcohol, cigar should be avoided. In mitral valve prolapse energy management, in the class one indications, in this case, aspirin is the best option. Patient with mitral valve prolapse with experiences cerebral transient ischemic attack. In patient with mitral valve prolapse, atrial fibrillation, warfarin is recommended in patients is greater than 65 or those with hypertension, mitral um, MR, murmur and history of heart failure. Another is aspirin, that is 75 to 325 per day, is recommended in patients with mitral valve prolapse and atrial fibrillations who are less than 65 years old and have no history of mitral regurgitation, hypertension, or heart failure. In patients with mitral valve prolapse and a history of stroke, warfarin is recommended in patients with MR, atrial fibrillation, or left atrial thrombus. Class two indications. Patients with mitral valve prolapse, history of stroke, aspirin therapy is reasonable. Patients do, who do not have MR, atrial fibrillation, uh, LA thrombus, and echographic evidence of thickened mitral lipid, five millimeters or more. Warfarin therapy is reasonable for patients with mitral valve prolapse with tangent ischemic attack despite aspirin. Aspirin therapy is beneficial in patients with mitral valve prolapse, history of stroke, who have contraindicated to anticoagulants. Aspirin, therefore, other the therapy may be considered in patients with uh, uh, abnormal rhythms, echocardiogram evidence of the high risk of Product. That is the class two B. Thank you, one. Shonajay. Ha, Shonajay. Thank you, uh, Doctor Professor Nazir Ahmed, for your elaborate lecture. So you have few questions. Quite a portion of chapter, you know, if you can answer this question. Number one, uh, uh, one one question is uh, asymptomatic patient with severe MR. Is uh, indication of surgery ki hobe act? Art uh, portion uh, portion of the portion of the automatic patient severe MR. Already it is mentioned in the guidelines. It is found that asymptomatic patients, good LV functions, will mild to moderate MR, especially moderate MR, is LV function is normal or some preserved of the LV functions, only follow-up of the patients 
with some medicine for my trembling agitations. Follow-up may be done annually or two years intervals. If the mitral regurgitation is relatively higher, that is moderate to severe in these cases, when the LVD systolic function is gradually down with severe, sometimes with severe mitral regurgitations, then surgery is the options. আচ্ছা <laughs> লিখে দিছে দিস কোশ্চেন ইজ ফর কবির জামান স্যার আচ্ছা پیشنট উইথ মডারেট এমআর এন্ড মডারেট এমএআর সিম্পটোম্যাটিক হলে অপশন কি দিবেন एक्चुअली মডারেট এআর এন্ড মডারেট এমআর ইফ देयर इज হিমোডাইনামিক বার্ডেন বিকজ বোথ দ্য লিশনস লিডস এন্ড লিড টু এন্ড ভলিউম ভলিউম ওভারলোড টু এলবি এন্ড ইফ देयर इज এলবি ডাইলেটেশন এন্ড ডিসফাংশন চৌধুরী professor fazila tasna mali so i i uh, i request ashla ami dekhchilam to tin ke comment korbo ami ekta holo onek detail e alochona kora hoyeche ekhon amader kintu jokhon erokom amra ei je lecture gula ayojon kori amader tin ti jinish khyal kora uchit kader jonno korchi keno korchi ebong tara ki eta grohon korte parbe kina jodi ami porikha perspective e boli The best lecture was given by Professor Kobri Jaman. Agdom, to the point, I'm at eight good Jana Duka, eight at Juni Eta. Damn. Acha. Najir Bhair subject at Jeta Sheta Ashole, Kubi Ekta Kibul Bami. Jonah, what subject? Yet at Honey Kambar Sam. This is a mechanical problem. We have to go for a mechanical solution. I'm Tatamaki guideline Nikosa Dashbi. আমি আসলে প্রেফার করব যে আমরা গাইডলাইন গুলো দেখি জাস্ট গাইডলাইনটা দেখে আমি সরে গিয়ে জাস্ট আমার কি পয়েন্টটা যে একটা দুইটা তিনটা কি পয়েন্ট আমার খেয়াল রাখতে হবে আমার স্টুডেন্ট তো পরীক্ষার হলে বা আমি যখন তাকে জিজ্ঞেস করব অতটা বলতে পারবে না যে তাদের জন্য এটা হলে ভালো হতো ইস্টাকির জন্য ভাই আমি এটাই অনুরোধ করব তুমি গাইডলাইনটা দেখাও দেখে গবে গিয়ে তাকে জাস্ট কি পয়েন্ট দুইটা তিনটা চারটা পয়েন্ট বলে এর বেশি বলো না কারণ দে উন্ট রিমেম্বার এটা লাভ হবে না এটা কষ্ট করে করছেন এবং এটা যে কত সুন্দর করে করছেন সেটা দেখলে বোঝা যায় এবং আমি ইয়েকে বলবো যে স্টুডেন্টদের যেটা বলবো তারা অনেক কিছু চমৎকার চমৎকার কোশ্চেন করেছে দোজ আর ভেরি ইম্পর্টেন্ট আমার মনে হয় সেটা খুব চোখে পড়ার মতো এই আমার কমিটিটা আমার ভালো লাগছে আমি আজকে কিন্তু আমি ঝামেলার মধ্যে অনেক ইয়ে করে বসছিলাম comments on this well i wasn't prepared to give any i was sitting in the veranda watching this thing so thank you so much everyone i really had a great time i learned such a lot as usual and i think everyone was really good and i first of all i think i would like to thank wadud for coming over thank you so much wadud for coming and uh, giving us inspiration that means a lot to us thank you so much okay thank you that's thank that's you all uh, thanks to all the participants and the speakers and we will see you again in the next first of july and our topics will be aortic stenosis till then goodbye good luck thank you very much
ഒരു ബൈ താങ്ക് യു